Hello, hello, hello. I'm Richard Young. Welcome to our discussion today in celebration of Carnival Fashion Month CFM 2022. It is our first year commemorating how important fashion and style are to our carnival and to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. CFM, Carnival Fashion Month, was created because our carnival celebrations have been absent for two years and due to the pandemic. This yearly period when we like to dress up and make style and and play with self, you know, along the streets. This release that has made us probably the happiest people in the world. And so, therefore, it was kind of missing. And we found a way to build a community and let people show off their style. The Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts have partnered with us to bring you this discussion that explores how carnival has become an essential part of our expression and our individual style. I'm delighted to have some very dynamic guests joining me in this conversation. I have Lisa Marie Daniel, who's the general manager of Fashion TT. I have Sandra Carr, fashion design coordinator and program leader at UTT Caribbean Academy of Fashion and Design. I have Deborah Hoyt Redman, who is an international trade specialist at Export TT. Jamilia De Beek, co founder, CEO of Appoint Digital Platform. Sani and Lewis of Sanianitos, that's a design brand, and Chandel Lorenard from the fashion brand Willow and Oak. When I come back, we will connect with these dynamic, wonderful ladies and start the conversation. Right, ladies, there they are, a beautiful array of wonderful women who are so dynamic in their own fields, and I know them, so I want you now to take, for you to introduce yourself to our listening audience. Hi, Richard. Thank you so much for having me this evening. It's certainly an honor, and I'm really, really happy to be among all of these brilliant and beautiful women as well who, you know, readily promotes fashion and carnival wherever they go. So, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. And, you know, in keeping with carnival, yes, you know, a lot of events have been happening virtually. There have been the safe zone events. There have been many things that have been happening. But I would like to share in particular what Fashion TT has been doing that carnival does not have to stop after this week, right? Carnival isn't stopping. Well, at least from the virtual aspect of it, because at the end of March this year, March 25th, 2022, we will be having a virtual trade mission, basically Ooh. sharing a suite of designs and fashion from our GVC designers. Some of them are very much involved in carnival, such as Jay Angelique, such as Genesis Swimwear, you know, I can I can just call the names of all, but it's a nice suite of the store, what's within the industry and the emerging designers within the industry who are doing really, really well. So within this virtual trade mission, we will have a beautiful virtual exhibitor platform. It's like you're walking into a virtual hall and you will be hearing our local oh, music you. as you walk into the hall. It's going to be an immersive experience. You're going to see avatars and stuff. It's going to be wonderful. Okay. You're going so to see our... Hold it a little bit, Alicia. I want you to hold it. I don't want to give away all yet. I don't want you to give away all yet. I, <laughs> like this year. I have a part where I want you to talk a little more about it because I know about it. And I know you have worked uh, very hard on that, that, that particular initiative and I'm so proud of you. We're coming back to you with it because I give you the for that. Well, you know, when I start talking, I can't stop that. Eh? I know that's okay. okay. <laughs> this is all part of this. Yeah. This is all part of this. <laughs> Let the others get, yeah. <laughs> Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Sandra Carr. I am the fashion coordinator program leader at the Caribbean Academy of Fashion Design at UTT. I've been at UTT uh, since inception in 2008, and we have graduate, uh, graduated a lot of designers that are now um, in this industry. 
locally, regionally, and even internationally doing great things. You know, so it, I am really happy to be here. Great. Yes. Hi, I'm Deborah Hoyt, um, business advisor for the services industry at Export TT Limited. And it is my utmost pleasure and privilege to be here among this really distinguished panel of fantastic ladies and of course you Richard. Um, Exportity has in the past and we continue to and we will in the future support the uh, fashion industry in whatever area is required. As a matter of fact we're working together with Fashion TT on that virtual trade mission yes. and um, yes and really looking forward to it. We also have a number of other initiatives as well, our export uh, booster initiative all that things, are geared towards supporting things. All things. I don't <laughs> want everything just yet. All yes. things. Let me let everybody introduce and then I'm coming back in. I'm coming back in. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Jamelia uh, Dibik Ni Alexander. I am the founder of the Upcoin Digital Platform, co founder. And what we do essentially, um, we develop, assist brands with developing their products on our digital platform. I'm a graduate of the Caribbean Academy of Fashion and Design, a proud graduate of the Caribbean Academy of Fashion and Design. You'll always hear me trumpet that. Um, but essentially what we do is we work with brands to develop their products by identifying the trends within the, specifically the, the aesthetics that, in, that really inspire them and develop that all the way along the value chain as well as sales. And we are currently developing, um, assist, uh, additionally developing the platform in collaboration with the SIF fund, which you'll kind of speak about as well through CDB. So that's that's a point and that's me. I'm really, really excited to be here. This is a lovely panel um, and a, a, a worthy panel to be here to really discuss the intricacies of fashion and especially fashion business as it relates to uh, Carnival, which is a big part of our Caribbean aesthetic. Wonderful, wonderful. Hi, <laughs> I'm Sanyan. I am the style director and founder of Sanyan Itos, which was conceptualized to reflect the essence of the Caribbean through the Trinbagoinian aesthetic. So I just want to say happy Carnival Tuesday to everyone. Um, Carnival week carnival month is fashion month and is fashion week in trinidad and tobago um especially in the earlier part of the year and i look forward to us really getting into that conversation and what that means for all of us and yeah yes yeah hi everyone my name is shanda lorignard i am the owner and designer of willow and oak uh we design and produce locally clothing, home goods, and jewelry uh, for the minimalistic Caribbean woman. Um, I am also a designer of Lost Drive. So yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Um, cannot wait for this conversation because it's a very interesting conversation. Um, just like Sanyan said, fashion is carnival. Carnival is fashion. It is fashion week when it's carnival in Trinidad. So yeah, I'm excited and let's get into it. <laughs> yeah. So I am glad that we start off as enthusiastically as we did. Uh, as we did, I wasn't holding up anybody because I have a space for them to get the chance to talk. Yeah, so it's not that I don't want them to talk. So don't feel that at all. Um, so what I want to do now is just get a view, just to continue on that trend that Chandel said. We came up with this idea of Carnival Fashion Month. Um, what do you all feel that anybody can just jump in? Do you like the idea of that? Do we need to be doing some acknowledging of the trends that happen in our country as a as a season? Because we don't necessarily have the the other four seasons, climatic seasons, and we we certainly don't fall necessarily into the other seasons internationally. But we have our own thing. Do you feel it's a, a worthy endeavor to stimulate this kind of thinking at this time? I think so. Absolutely, yeah, I agree. So, I think I it's think. Mm -hmm. I think it's important because um, what Carnival is is it's an outward shining um, event, an outward facing event. While you know, of course, definitely involving the local community, it also really extends to the international community. 
And for so many people, it's a part of their own calendar, right? Their travel calendar. And what's interesting about Carnival is it happens right smack in the middle of the resort season where people are traveling. So while we, we definitely, there's an um, international connect there, I think it's so imperative for us to celebrate fashion at this time because it, it is an evolution as people started to be more, in, as the party started to evolve and, you know, become a little more formal and a little, a little more extra and luxurious. I think that um, the fashion has evolved and I think it's imperative for us to kind of take a look at that and see how our own local trends and how our own zeitgeist has changed and evolved over the years. So I think this conversation is so important because it affects us locally, but it also affects the international population that is visiting and are also having their own resort experiences. Mm -hmm. I love it. And Chandel, yeah. you, were, you were jumping in again and I wanted to hear you. Yes, what were you saying? Yeah. I, I think it's really important because I think within the last two years, there's been a shift in supporting local. I mean, I don't really like the term supporting local, but a lot of people are beginning to love the designs that local designers are putting out. And it's it, it feels like it's no longer almost like a competition going out. It's like, oh my God, you are wearing this person. I'm wearing this person too. So it feels like we are beginning to really love local designers and showing them off in effect so carnival at that time i see a lot of local designers and people are wearing local designers so i think it's important to have this carnival month this carnival fashion month to be able to showcase not only the style of Trinidad but also what we have to offer in terms of design so i think it's a Andrea, great Andrea, what would you have to say about that we had a I, I, I want to add that, you know, Carnival, because of its, his, its strong historical roots, is more than just an outfit. You know, um, Carnival coming out of colonialism and through a series of emancipation um, and uprising, um, Carnival has been re-imaged re and evolved to what it is today. So it's a cultural jubilee of celebration. It's a freedom of creativity, expression, fashion, culture, and style. You know, it, it is who we are. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, and and act, actually, following on what and what Sandra is saying, I I my take is why just one month? Yeah. Why yeah. is it? You know, why is it just one month? Why not carnival fashion? Because if that's what we're trying to sell as a country, we're trying to brand ourselves and trying to trying to sell um you know our fashion and, and tie it into our culture and to our traditions then it's just carnival fashion carnival fashion trinidad yeah and well, i think yeah. to Daniela's but, point if i could just say yes, just of a course. point in relation to that i would even say that well the idea of carnival fashion falls within the resort category so just to bring it back to that idea because everybody's points i think um harmonize really well with each other um, the idea that what we're doing is um, history, but also that it is not separate from what's happening internationally in terms of fashion, because that is an important element for us as well to sort of be unique, but be unique while also applying some of the fundamentals in relation to international fashion. So this month of fashion, if it's just at least for now one month, mm -hmm. then or two months, right? Because technically it yes. begins in January. <laughs> I think that um, the yeah. idea of FET season um, also applies mm -hmm. in terms of fashion month mm -hmm. or carnival and fashion. And I think much in the way that, you know, fashion week is just about a month or so inclusive of events, um, street, street fashion hi highlights these types of things. There's a way that can be translated locally by way of you know that intentional capture of style as Chandel pointed out carnival is around a time where a lot of people it connects to what what sandra Carr said about this expression of our culture it's yes. part of the reason why i believe people get zoned in on what is being produced and designed locally and sort of utilize that as well almost as an armor almost as a costume itself going yes. to affect really getting into the history and the creativity etc which i would say you know would just need to be streamlined to show that it applies 
with what what is happening internationally because yeah, for us and, to define ourselves happened. that way we don't need to separate i think you wanted to say anything lisa you I, I, i'm basically echoing the sentiments of what everyone is saying on the panel um you know I'm, I'm very passionate about shopping local and supporting local and just breathing local and everything that you do and i honestly think that as deborah said carnival fashion you know yeah. uh, i think that you know one month to promote essentially carnival fashion month fantastic we've never done anything like that as you've never done anything like that within that yeah. length before but maybe it's something that we can do throughout the year. Like yeah. I know that we did a lot of good work with you, Richard, last year yeah. in terms yeah. of creating yeah. beautiful content with designers who produce resort wear that can very yeah. much be worn at any point in time during exactly. the year, inclusive of Carnival. And yeah. in doing so, you showcase our designers. You don't only showcase fashion, but you showcase the locations within Trinidad. Yeah. You yeah. showcase the music in the background. It has to be embedded in everything that you do. You know, it yeah. just has to be, you know. Uh, I love it. Yes. It just has to be. It's our culture and this is who we are. Great. So I'm loving, I'm loving, I'm loving the vibe. When we when we came up with the idea, I had to just write a little piece of prose, if you want to call it that, and I, to try and link all the concepts together to come up with this. So I said fashion expresses our style. Style expresses our creativity creativity expresses the soul of our carnival and carnival is the expression of the people people make style to express freedom freedom gives us the passion to express ourselves in fashion so making style to fashioning our creativity is the essence of carnival so that's how i came up with carnival is fashion too at this time i want to take a look at some of the people who contributed because what we started was a campaign during the month and people just dressed up and took pictures that they had and submitted it into a hashtag ttcfm 2022 carnival is fashion carnival fashion month so we then we realized there's a movement we realized that we have built a community of people who share this idea so that is why we had to close off with some talk about it to give it some kind of you know institutional strength and some kind of intellectual integrity so let's take a peep at some of the fashions that were submitted Ready up, ready up, ready up. Ah, hey, I touch up and ready to sing, bam, bam, sing the bam, bam, sing, sing, bam, bam. Wonderful, wonderful. Wow. So we got a vibe from people. Yep. And I found it was so wonderful that they responded. So here's the part I was stalling everybody about because I know it was coming <laughs> up to time because all of you all have initiatives. We have manufacturing starting up, which I'm so excited about. I know about the virtual trade mission, which both export TT and fashion TT. And I want to hear from our independent brands, the digital platform from Jamilia, Shandell, and Sanyan. So this is where I want to open up the discussion. So I'll go back to you now, Lisa, and you can give us the excitement of this virtual trade mission, which is a first time again in line with what we're doing here. This is a first time, and you're pioneering, as you have always been trailblazing there, and I support you. So now is your time, Gil. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, thanks, Rich. I, I'd yeah. like to start off, though. I'd like to sort of go back to, um, you know, when this whole trade mission conceptualization would have started and that would have been when we started to create the promotional content for each of our global designers now fashion titi works with over 170 designers within trinidad and tobago 
there are 11 designers right now at the pinnacle of that particular capacity building program who are ready just to be, just to export, just to penetrate foreign markets. And those 11 designers, we started off last year in terms of creating immersive content, photography, videography at various locations throughout Trinidad and Tobago under the creative direction of Richard Young. So Richard, I'm very grateful to you. You know, it was it was remarkable. I mean, this is like a side joke. It was remarkable the kind of um, poses Richard had, those models standing up on the rocks and going sideways and stuff. I was like, wow. Or even like on top of a, a roof, it's all safe, of course, but it was just remarkable when you see the imagery. So that project, that part of that project would have been completed at the end of this, by early December, and we would have started promoting it via our lookbook in December as well, which was our fourth lookbook. And we are also using that content to be placed on the virtual trade mission platform that we are going to be launching on March 25th. Um, within that platform, as I was very excitedly saying earlier, <laughs> it's like you're walking through a lobby, you're hearing our local music, our local carnival music, you're going to see costumes, around the lobby you're going to see the logos of our various partners you're going to see an area for designers you click on that designer area you're going to see the showcase of designers each designer is going to have their own boots they're going to have their own virtual boots of which um buyers are going to be able to interact with them via a live chat buyers are able to query various things. I mean, it's just a lot of interaction. Commerce can actually happen then and there. And then there'll be the speeches. I wouldn't give it all up right away, but I just have to say it's going to be fantastic. It's going to have photography, videography. Um, and it's something that very much has a true essence of carnival and our culture. And I'm very, very grateful to Export TT, and I'm so happy that Deborah is here because Export <laughs> TT is helping push this initiative with us. In particular, the Virtual Trade Mission Initiative and that particular immersive platform and has supported us in terms of getting that consultant. So that's one project I'm very passionate about. We have our ongoing project, which is the Fashion Lookbook. We are launching our next lookbook on March 30th, 2021. It's going to be a suite of designers in jewelry and clothing categories. I see Shondal and Sanyan here. Your aesthetic is beautiful, Sanya. Just recently, I bought one of your beautiful earrings. It has Swarovski crystals in it. I hope that we can feature you at some point within the book. And Shanda, I love your classic jewelry. Thank you all will go within any book that we're doing. But excitingly enough, I have to say that we have forged a partnership with Caribbean Airlines. Caribbean Airlines will be showing our lookbooks from March this year on their in-flight video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and our uh, well, yeah, yeah, and the hard copies of the book. I mean, we. I wish that we could print hard copies and circulate throughout the whole of Trinidad and Tobago and give each designer a hard copy of the book. But they're so expensive, right? So we try to bring on sponsors to bring in a few so we could put it in strategic locations throughout Trinidad that have good consumer traffic. Well, amazingly enough, they are taking hard copies of our books and they're putting it in their business lounges as well. So. Yeah. There's two big things. I mean, we, 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 we're launching our capacity building programs in terms of the fundamentals of business at the end of March as well, in partnership with a select business institution. You know, I'm excited to disclose that. And then in partnership with UTT, of course, UTT is such a fabulous institution with Sandra Card, CFD. And, you know, it's so fantastic that, you know, Sandra, I mean, we are happy to partner and support, but through Sandra Card pushing, that facility is not open since January 17 this year. And it's something definitely to be proud of. So Sandra, I'm not talking about that. That's your thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just sure. saying, yeah. I'm just saying that that's something yeah. else that we're proud of. And that's me in a nutshell in terms of everything that we're doing and everything that we're excited about. So just continue to stay tuned in terms of what we're doing on social media and online. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you so much, Lisa. And I'm seeing there are a lot of people on doing shout outs to some of you all on, on the program here. And I'm glad to see that people are supporting us. I saw Dawn Victor reaching out. I saw Dominic LaRoche reaching out. I saw um, Cook Delpesh from New York reaching out and making some statements. So that's really, really, really good. And I, I want to swing over to Sandra, of course. 
because as you made that link to the the, manu the manufacturing sector um, department of this whole thrust forward is it's really important because I know that has been a thought for forever and, and Sandra's <laughs> pushing that and so to realize it Sandra come in here and tell us what is happening oh, I think you tell me masks could be made from the from the manufacturing yeah 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 yes 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 definitely um you know this thing had really have been conceptualized over 10 years ago you know because we saw that there was a need to create a facility as our designers emerged out of the the academy they needed a place where they can um grow their businesses and do production you know and so that is where that initial um idea came from and five years um five years ago over five years ago we got grant funding edf funds and we were able to get all the um equipment for the fashion production facility i'm gonna jump through all the struggles and all the trials and tribulations i've been through but yes like lisa said january 17th we launched and it was just let's do this just open the doors because if we wait to have everything there we'll be doing this for another five years or so and of course with lisa um fashion tt um supporting and pushing we did it um is the response has been amazing um designers are coming in every week they are in awe with the facility because this is the first time there's a facility with designers in mind we created this that designers can come in and whatever they listen we thought we was going to produce clothing only we are doing stuff toys we're doing jewelry we're doing i mean things that you would not even imagine people just want to see their goods mass produced so our facility um, production starts at a dozen on up we're able to do our cut and sew production we offer um digital um printing fabric printing wow. we order um we also offer um laser cutting we have um vinyl cutting we also have a cnc milling machine and this is the machine that can actually cut wood all those intricate things it can do um acrylic all of those things so this is why we have the capacity to cut floats and all those things of course this is all controlled by a, a computer so once you program all the images into the computer the machine just goes I mean, it's a really um, a wonderful thing. The other service that we're um, setting up that we'll be launching soon is um, fashion photography. So we will have okay. a studio. Yep, That's you wonderful. will have a studio inside the facility. So okay. it is just the beginning. And um, like I said, this is filling a huge gap, not just in our local industry, regionally, and we would expand to our diaspora internationally soon. Wonderful. So it is a very burgeoning time, and it's really timely that we are having this talk because all this information needs to get out there, and we're getting it out. So I'm swinging yes. over to Export TT because I know Export TT partnering in all of these things to, to make whatever we have to present to the world because I know one of Lisa's um, angles is that we're ready to take on the world. We're ready to take on the world. <laughs> So therefore that means export becomes critical you know yes. so our style going out to the world our carnival style or kind of our caribbean fashion that has a trinbagonian um origin is, is is ready to take on the world so tell us what is happening with fashion as it has as it is aligned with export tt well you know definitely as 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 lisa says you know we are ready to take on the world and we have been ready to take on the world for quite a while now actually yeah is, uh, as as my chairman always says, we're kind of like best kept secret. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but that being said, I mean, Export TT has a number of initiatives in place to support not just the fashion, but the manufacturing sector. And um, we have the, our uh, $250,000 matching grant that is available to uh, designers, to um, entrepreneurs, 
who wants to be able to purchase equipment. So while there is a facility that is going to help them to be able to access um, equipment and to get themselves going, once they find that they are ready and they want to take it on on their own, they can access that facility. It's $250,000, up to $250,000 matching. And um, it's, it's a fairly easy process. It, it really is. And the information is online. Um, in addition to that, we also have our Export Booster Initiative, um, which encompasses, we have a, an incubator program as well as an accelerator program, both of which designed to work with entrepreneurs who, like for the incubator, who are not quite ready to export yet, but who have the initiative and who want to get the information. And uh, we pair them with, uh, with consultants who are able to go through with them their business, their business plan, their export plan, and put things in place to get them to be export ready. And then we have the accelerator for those who are ready to export. Again, they go through the same process, working with a consultant who is able to, again, guide them through that process. Um, wow. Again, all of these initi initiatives are online. The information is all there. Um, and those are the ones that are, are on stream right now. We have a couple more coming on soon. Um, we have uh, uh, one dealing with um, printing, with packaging, packaging and labeling of your of your products for for export into a particular market. Um, we have um, uh, uh, whew, a, a number of them coming on. Okay. Um, but I, in addition to that, and I'm so glad that this that I, I shouldn't say glad, but I'm happy to see that this is our, our, our female panel led by Richard. But yeah. um, I'm not sure if people are aware of the She Trades Initiative. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago is part of the She Trades Initiative. But that's a hub where the International Trade Center is looking to network 5 million women across the globe. And wow. Trinidad and Tobago has a hub. We are, and Export ET is part of that hub. Well, we, we run the hub. And um, as part of that initiative, we have about over 800 female entrepreneurs registered on the platform. And I dare to see that, I, 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 I can't you know, say it for sure, but I am sure that more than 50% of those female entrepreneurs are in the cultural and the, the design and the, the apparel uh, seg segments. And oh, wow. just looking at them and, and, and trying to work with them and trying to find ways that we can, um, you know, let with them and build them up and get them to work with not just Export TT, but with Fashion TT as well and with UTT to bring them up to international standards. That's what we're working towards. That's what we're, that's what we're where we are and where we're working right now. Wow. So there are some comments here. People are thinking we're quite forward thinking in doing this. I saw Donna Dove, who is um, a Trinidad and Tobago designer based in New York. She just commented on um, Sugar Brat Designs is on as well, seeing Deborah Richardson here. Um, people who say they're living for fashion and they are loving the fact that we utilize this time to raise this awareness. I am delighted to be hosting this with these and so many secrets i think we we are well kept secrets. And exploring well kept here, secrets. You know? <laughs> i'm going to go into one or two of our young people there whose hands are in there um let, let's go to chandel and hear what is she doing what what is new with chandel how are you dealing with the time now and what are you doing um well well on oak like i said earlier is a lifestyle brand so we design and produce almost everything in Trinidad, actually everything in Trinidad. Um, we, one of the main things we focus on is quality of our goods. So we do a lot of quality control. We check all our pieces because, because our style and our brand emulates like everyday way. We focus on comfort and ease. It's really, really important to look at the longevity of a garment. So like how much, how often is it gonna wash? Is it gonna last? Is it gonna turn? Is it going to free all these different things we focus on in our brand to make sure that the customer gets a good quality product? Almost like it can stand up to everything outside of Trinidad. Um, apart from that, I also mm -hmm. own a boutique.
with my co-owner. Uh, her name is Emma. She owns Island Vintage Goods. The name of the boutique is 36 Cornelio, and we offer space for other local designers as well as makers in terms of like uh, hair products, uh, bath products, everything that you can think of that's local. We offer this space for them to come and sell their product for them. So that's what we've been yeah. I feel, I'm liking all of this entrepreneurial spirit um, <laughs> channeled to these women here. I go to Sanya now. I'm leaving Jamilia for last in this group here because I know I'm leaving her for last, but I'm going to Sanya now. <laughs> I feel like what Sanya is doing. What is, I love the accessories that you have on there, Sanya. Thank you. It's Carnival Tuesday. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, these, these pieces were actually... Um, a part of uh, some stuff that I did for Lost Tribe for the last carnival that we had actually on the road. You know, Shandell also had a costume for Carnival Tuesday. The yeah. Monday concept was Guardians of the White Cloth. So the purpose of that was sort of to um, give a very obvious and literal um, bridging between carnival and the revelry of it and putting fashion into the framework so in essence creating pieces that you can wear even beyond the road that was um a really nice opportunity to really display that and you know when it comes to lost tribe carnival in particular it's very much um we very much pride ourselves as the culture band so the opportunity to play between those concepts of fashion and carnival um in terms of what is happening with san Yanitos, um more recently collaborations right so one of the fundamental elements of uh, why i wanted to get involved in fashion and particularly with the flag of the trinvagonian slash caribbean designer um, was because i identified that we are a multicultural country and there's a lot of talent and there's absolutely no reason that we can have authentic just in the spirit of Trinidad and Tobago, great collaboration. So currently, because we're talking about now, right? Um, currently I have uh, three pairs of earrings that I designed for another fashion brand called Shoma the Label. Um, so that's what I would say is happening now. Uh, recently I was um, really honored to be one of the jewelry designers featured in uh, y Gallery's Jewel Box exhibition last year, um, which was great. And then other than that, I mean, I think when it comes to my brand, there is an element of it where because my focus is on reflecting this essence of the Trinbegonian aesthetic and how that can be interpreted um, to some degree, at least up until I would say last year, the pieces, uh, my pieces are generally affiliated with that idea like carnival of celebration adornment attention to detail those types of things but i think because of the past couple of years um people are sort of very excited to dress up and i think there's a little bit of a shift occurring from the minimalist mindset to the idea of what maximalism is and so i hope that that's that's i think is a space where um, Trinidad and Tobago, in terms of our culture and all these things, I think it's a space where we're going to see a lot of maybe what we spoke about earlier and what we want to project in terms of fashion internationally um, being displayed with an, an intelligence of what's happening locally. So wow. They just... wow. Wow. So you see why I'm excited. You see why I'm excited <laughs> with these women here. They are talking, this is about creative intelligence. Mm -hmm. Just as Sanya closed off with there, it's yes. about creative intelligence. It, what is also being sprouted here is partnership and collaboration mm -hmm. because everybody is overlapping and it's beautifully so. I am just going to be a conduit really to facilitate this and I work in the, in the, in the nexus as a thread 
to all these organizations and persons here. I am really feeling honored that I was able to pull them together on Carnival Tuesday to have a discussion like this. And I am, yeah, what is also very important in the realm of fashion, all forward thinking things and pivoting and things is technological advancement. And technological advancement is part of the, the movement into the reimagining our space after this pandemic. And so that's why I left Jamila for last because she has a digital platform and she herself is inspiring me to become more adept in this thing because I'm a technomore and I'm admitting it openly here. Jamila is always been more adept thinking. in the areas of bringing technology to advance us, you know. I mean, even doing this little platform here, we we would have had to wait to get all of us sitting in a room. And um, and now I'm able to chat with all of you all in one space and everybody is in their own space and we still could communicate and beam it out to persons. And I'm so happy about that. So, Jamelia, what's happening with you, girl? Uh, so much is happening. I think um, just to speak to my personal brand, my personal brand is, my, my belief is that Creativity is essentially the highest form of intelligence, as Albert Einstein said. And um, I think that, that that level of intelligence always needs a framework to assist it and to fortify it so that it could be as strong as it, it needs to be. And that is usually the, the human's effort that I try to, to really inject into everything that I do. As sometimes difficult as it is, just kind of dragging it along but really staying focused on that and understanding that that effort would never go to waste because it is in support of creativity, right? And technology is, and, and not just creativity, but also the expression of creativity and the commerce of creativity, right? Um, so that creatives always have the opportunity to, to, to live and to, to expand and to get to, to earn as much as they possibly can. Um, and so that has kind of guided me towards expanding my personal brand into a platform that would allow brands to do that would allow persons to do that if they are interested and if they would like to express their creativity and explore it and see what other opportunities are there for them and all of that is really essentially fortifying a value chain um platform that allows the brands to do this to go along the value chain which could seem kind of daunting but it's a digital workspace that guides them through that process. And we're, we're consistently building new aspects. And right now we're in the process of building out um, aspects that would allow the brands to, to access services. We've done a soft launch of that and we're fortifying that to become service providers, um, to be able to build out their, pro their products and to be able to support the business aspect of their of their, um, of their their creativity of their brand. Um, as a graduate of UTT, um, the, the school that birthed us, um, I'm absolutely passionate about Caribbean design, local design. We've done a few projects and right now, we've done some projects with the OECS. Right now we're in the process of um, executing a build and training um, project with through the, the support of the Caribbean Development Bank through the SIF fund, which is um, really geared towards assisting from a financial and technical aspect, but also assisting with the development of the business aspect specifically um, and conceptualization and bringing concepts to life for um, Caribbean creatives, as well as on the management side. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, we one of our training programs is really speaking to the actualization of the creative aesthetic, which kind of goes deeper than just see the aesthetic, but really um, dissecting it and understanding how that can be translated into a saleable product, because that's where the gap is, right? Just ensuring that there's always an opportunity to, to fortify the brand. And Richard is is part of um, part of that, really teaching that as the as the Caribbean aesthetic man himself you know and also speaking to the value chain um assessing your value chain and seeing where the gaps are and what you can do to to fill those gaps and we'll also be filling those gaps through the platform you know so it's it this is kesmet this is really a a great platform to be a part of 
Um, and I'm really excited to be here and to be a part of this at a time where we're really speaking to like the, the core, right? The high octane creativity that comes out around the carnival time. And I'm always happy to be a support system for that and to build things mm -hmm. that support that. Become a, because I come from an institution and I've been taught by an institution that was built to support that. So that's essentially, you know, what I do. And that's what wow. our brand uh, point platform course. is doing now. Camila still hits, you know. <laughs> every moment, every moment. So we are talking from ideation to actualization. I am loving this panel even more now that we got into the dialogue, you know, because I, 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 I when we crafted this, because this was crafted by OMG Media and Richard Young, and we, we, we Richard Young, me as a brand, <laughs> who, to say that Carnival, because all of us want to, to find a way to monetize our creativity and um right. and that is the that has to be the ultimate thing and i am always want to push entrepreneurial um prowess to 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 fruition so i approached the ministry of tourism culture and the arts with the idea and they kind of endorsed it and i am glad that they did to allow us to have this space to talk and so yeah so when we come back, I'm just going to close because it's almost time and is up. We're going to come just at two seconds, a few seconds. Um, we'll come back and I want you to talk to what is a special place in my heart. So, yeah, you'll come back in a sec. <laughs> Carnival, Carnival, it's Carnival Tuesday. Yes, Lisa Roberts just joined us. Creativity is currency. Yes, <laughs> driving innovation and efficiency. Wonderful point. But you know, I am um, to close. If I, it would be remiss of me if I don't raise this point, and I want a comment from everybody because you know I'm the biggest advocate for what I call the Caribbean aesthetic. I think Trinbegonian style and Trinbegonian um, creative entrepreneurship belongs in this this larger um, um, umbrella the thought that must go out to the world. And I believe in the Caribbean aesthetic. I will talk about it after some of you all through your, your five cents into it. Because what is the Caribbean aesthetic? Does it, does it say something to you when you hear it? And do you think we need to build it and boost it? Um, so we need quick comments from everybody because it's almost time because it was a wonderful time. We're having fun and it's just running down the time. But I want everybody to comment on this feeling of Caribbean aesthetic and probably how it's linked with carnival because a carnival carnivalesque aesthetic is indeed part of what makes us Caribbean. Anyone can jump in. So I'm just going to throw it out there and say that I think that okay. the Caribbean aesthetic is something that um, you can't run from, quite literally, whether you be from the Caribbean or otherwise. So it's something to embrace. And I am a firm believer in the idea that the Caribbean aesthetic is a luxurious aesthetic. So if that's my quick point, it's just that. And I think that is what we should focus and expand upon that we live where people vacation that's a lifestyle how does it translate that's what i think excellent thank you we'll go to lisa 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 well rich you know the caribbean aesthetic was spoken about very highly in our strategic plan for the fashion industry since 2015 of which you would have very much contributed to that topic and what the plan really spoke about in terms of Caribbean aesthetic, of which you would have chimed in on, is that we are a Caribbean people. We have a unique selling proposition to the rest of the world that the rest of the world doesn't have. So they are all looking to the Caribbean to see what is happening next. What can we emulate in terms of the next set of tropical, beautiful, unique products, you know? So. Trinidad and Tobago is fantastic, but we together within the Caribbean 
have to market ourselves as a movement. We are the Caribbean and we have to unite as a Caribbean. And when we are marketing ourselves, that's what the rest of the world sees. So Excellent. You know, that's Excellent. my opinion. Thanks, Lisa. Um, Deborah, let me go to Deborah. Let me go to Deborah. <laughs> well, my take on it is, um, you know, when you think Caribbean, you think of a geographical location, which is definitely correct. But when you think of the Caribbean aesthetic, that's a worldwide thing because the Caribbean is all over the world. We have diaspora all over the world. So it's not just thinking, you know, where we are and what we can produce, but what the world can see us producing because we are in the world. The Caribbean aesthetic is in the world. That's my take on it. I'm going to Sandra now. Hi. Yes, so um, coming out of Carnival, our costumes are very intricate. They're delicate, they're colorful, and they're skillfully designed. They tell a story of our people. And our fashion, our textiles, and our aesthetics should also be the same. I think too many designers try to emulate the first world designers forgetting that they have a story to tell. So as Caribbean designers, we have to tell our stories. Excellent. Very, very thing. Yes. Um, let's go to um, Chandel. Um, I think the Caribbean aesthetic is subjective. I think, you know, you could like the colorful Caribbean, the commercial view of the Caribbean, but there's also the aspect of comfort and ease and what is the weather like? You know, you're yeah. not going to it's not it's uncomfortable to wear a rayon outside like you need cool breezy fabrics to not sweat <laughs> um so that's why i would say it's subjective like you know the caribbean aesthetic is all up to the wearer if they want to be uh caribbeanly vibrant that's the wearer if they want to be minimalistic and cool and ease and breezy then that's also up to the wearer so i think there's like it's subjective that's what I think. Cool. Okay. Um, Jamilia? Yes, let me hear you. The Caribbean aesthetic, in two words, is dynamic and it's relevant, right? So to speak to what everybody is saying, there's so many aspects of the Caribbean aesthetic, and we're just talking about Trinidad and Tobago. We, we, if we touch the, um, the first peoples all over the Caribbean, in Belize, in Guyana, in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago, we touch on and, and their impact on carnival and fashion. There's so many layers to it, even in what we're doing right now, where we see the intersection between craft and visual arts and fashion, right? It, there's so many layers and there's so many aspects that consistently add to the Caribbean aesthetic, right? And that aesthetic consistently builds and it consistently grows. So it is dynamic and it is relevant to each and every person and each and every faction of the Caribbean. But in addition to that, the Caribbean aesthetic, and as the Caribbean, because of how relevant it is, I'd like to dig a little deeper, if you'd allow me two seconds. As we decide and develop the Caribbean aesthetic, and we put our thumbprint on that, and we define what the Caribbean aesthetic is, we will now be in a position to assist others with defining what their aesthetic is. And that is the extensive value of defining the Caribbean aesthetic. Because in the Caribbean, we have people from all over the world, from all of the continents, and we could speak to all of those different aesthetics. And if we could define that, and we could really hone in on that, then we could really prove on a deep level our relevance and assist others in creating the framework of what their aesthetic is and making it easily identifiable. So let's understand the relevance of the Caribbean aesthetic. It is about the color, it's about the minimalism, it's about all of those things because we are so multidimensional and we are relevant. Yeah, so um, Jamilia, I was gonna speak to that because sometimes when I was, Starting off with my whole feeling about the Caribbean aesthetic, people used to tell me I was too Caribbean. Um, they used to mm. think that because they used to think the Caribbean was um, tie-dyed t-shirts and 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 and, and bangles on a on a colored mm -hmm. tablecloth at a, at a at a market. But it is about the eclecticism 
the syncretism of being in this multicultural space, the multidimensionality about us living in this part of the world. People might look in and call it le leisure wear and resort wear, but it must be defined by who we are. It is identity branding at its best. And Carib the Caribbean aesthetic, people must know whether it's minimalist, whether it is almost like couture, because carnival design is almost like it's couture. It's layered, it's collage art, it's 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 surface treatment that gives a new surface. And that is what the Caribbean is. And that comes from the plurality of our space. It comes from um, this melting pot culture that we have that we need to take and own and, 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 and don't feel that we always have to be appealing to first world and, and, and the situations that happen in the metropolis. And that we need to see this is ours. It's island, it's tropical, it's West Indian, it's Caribbean you know, um, and, and therefore it has to be influenced by the culture and the lifestyle. And you breathe that into whatever you're doing as a creative, and therefore people are going to respect you more when you stand there. When I go to spaces, like I spoke at FIT, and I spoke in Montreal, and I spoke in Toronto, and in New York, and in and Miami at spaces that want to hear what I have to say about this Caribbean aesthetic. That is what I think they're attracted to. So it made me aware of my responsibility to sell this unique selling position, as 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 Lisa said, and that is what I think the allure is. The appeal is almost like what the French call a magie antillaise, coming from this part of the world. It's a magical something that we have to own and craft and 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 parlay it into something that could be monetized. And we must make sense of it, and we must not do it an approximation of of somebody else's um, aesthetic. We need to make it our own in a real sense. And that's why I wanted to make the link between carnival because I see fashion as a, a costuming of our style, a costuming of the way we live. I know we wear our costume in the style, whether it is just minimalist linens or whether it is, is um, applique fabrics creating a new surface. All of it belongs in the Caribbean space. And that's what has me driven. And I moved to the Caribbean because I have worked with, throughout the Caribbean to understand how they interpret their space and how they translate it into their creative um, endeavors. You know, Northern Caribbean is slightly different from us. They have more pastel hues. They, they're naturally into to mint greens and soft blues and peaches and beiges. And as you come further south, the colors explode. And even onto the subcontinental Caribbean, like in Guyana and, and, and Suriname and French Guyana, when I go there, it's all a, 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 a referencing of, of the French, the Spanish, the, the, the Dutch, it, it is really, really something that is like the patois. It's like our palace. I call it vernacular in motion, you know, and we translate that into style. So that is what makes us make style. Making style is, is craft, you know, and we craft the style at carnival time, the best time to craft it. And so making style, which is a, a colloquial expression of being confident about what you are and your identity and what you wear is what I think is all part of the Caribbean aesthetic. So that is why it has to be informed, like Lisa said, the music must be in the undertone. The backdrop, the destination marketing must inform what we're selling. It cannot be approximations of somebody else's style. It has to be style and methodology of transfer of style born from us. And that's why I think that carnival really essentially is the core and the center of this because it is about making stuff, making something from nothing, making beauty from nothing, like how the pan was made from the thrown away pans. You know, we have to do that in order to give ourselves cultural confidence. And when we give ourselves that cultural confidence, then we see we make in style. We, we explashiating, as some people say. You know, so I want to thank you for joining us today. It was wonderful chatting with you all. 
all of you all informed the discussion wonderfully from your different backdrops. Um, I want to acknowledge the Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts of Trinidad and Tobago for the endorsement in celebrating this first Carnival Fashion Month. Um, as we look forward to CFM 2023, thank you, Chandel. Thank you, Lisa Marie Daniel. Thank you, Jamilia. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Sandra, for coming on. And thank you, Sanyan. It was really wonderful to have you. If you all want to say anything or just wave or just say yeah. bye. Thank yeah. you, Richard. I, before we close, yeah. Let me hear I would just like to say that I have always challenged my students to tell the story of their culture through fashion. We have wonderful. a story to tell to the world. Yeah. And I would we like to speak to one teller. thing as well. Yeah. The, talk, yeah. the talk here is absolutely important. But as we leave here, each and every one of us, I am confident. I am confident that we are all going to our respective jobs, our respective companies, our respective agencies, and we are acting daily and moving the needle. So I'm so happy to be a part of this group that speaks, but also acts. Yeah. This is an Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, that is the truth. <laughs> it was absolutely yes. wonderful. Thanks for having us, people out there. Thanks for joining in. It has been Carnival Fashion Month, the climax of our activities of 2022. And we're looking forward to 2023 and we're seeing that Carnival is fashion too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.